And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. It's your favorite homegirl, E. Reed, your favorite host that loves to smile the most. I'm back, y'all. And you know what? I want y'all to sit back, relax, turn it up, and check this out. And I'm back, everybody. That's right. It's your favorite homegirl, E. Reed. I'm back with another Reed Reality Radio presents My Two Cents. And this is a little bit of storytelling. Now, let me start off with telling y'all this. I just got through doing, um, this is just how when I say that Reed Reality Radio is um, all raw and not edited. Because I literally just did, maybe spoke for like maybe 12 minutes or close to 12 minutes. And realized that I didn't have my microphone plugged in to my phone to record. So, and I was wondering, like, why isn't the equalizer moving like it normally moves when I talk into the microphone? And then I realized that I had the cord in my hand. And where I usually have the phone at where I'm recording, it wasn't plugged in together. So, yeah. So, here we are. We're going to try this. Take two. All right, um, cause the it's not that I'm gonna say anything different or anything, but I just sounded so far away versus with my microphone, and I love using my microphone. Okay, so this is definitely gonna be a little bit of storytelling and uh, sharing with y'all about how I got into radio. Now I do share with y'all in a previous uh, my two cents episode about my inspiration to do radio, but this story is telling you about actually how I got it started into it and it actually started when I was about 18 19 years old and I was with my friends at the time we're going to a college that's located in Hayward it's a community college called Chabot College and they were taking broadcasting classes and I would go with them on my days off to their with them to their classes and be in their classes and learn stuff and then go back and hang out with them and then like see them do their homework or like participate or whatever and I'm not even in the class with them but I got a history of doing that too that's a whole nother story um <laughs> shout out to ceremony high school <laughs> in daily city <laughs> um but anyway so like yeah I will go with them to their class and stuff like that and they also have friends that ended up becoming my friends that actually worked at a local uh, a public radio station called KPFA out there down the street from U from UC Berkeley, you know, the prestigious university. And uh, they had friends that worked there and they worked on, they worked on a show called Sideshow Radio, which was dedicated to independent hip hop artists, local and nationwide. You know, you would just have to submit your music or whatever. And, they the show was on for where Friday night meets Saturday morning, so it was right at the midnight mark of set of Saturday morning, and the show was from twelve a.m. to two a.m. and we would go hang out with them at their radio show. So that was my very first taste of being inside an actual radio station, being inside an actual studio at the radio station, being around the equipment, seeing the uh, the board, seeing the microphones, how everything works, you know, and, and what to do and the interaction that everybody has and how you playing off of people and everything like that. That was my very first experience, 18, 19 years old. Fast forward to over a decade later, I leave Seattle because that's where I was living at the time. And then I end up moving back to the Bay Area. And I started while I was in Seattle, I was working with a friend of mine that I had met through going to the reggae clubs that I used to go to all the time because he worked with an organization that was a promotions company. And some of the party, the reggae parties I would go to, they were the ones pr putting on the reggae party. So I would see him a lot at the events, right? So when I was in Seattle, I reached out to him and asked him about working, you know, doing some promotions for him on the side because I was thinking about throwing my hat in the ring. You know, it seemed like it seemed fun. I liked going out and everything like that. And it seemed like it was a it was a win win situation. I get to go out and intermingle with people and see good acts. And then, you know, I can share their content and maybe I can build a business out of it. I don't know. But I was willing to try because I believe in trial and error. 
You just never know. And anytime you're doing a career change, you got to have some kind of internship. So I volunteered for a self made internship. And he was like, cool. So everything he had posted, I would repost it, you know, and him being um, a, a already working with a promotions company, it just was kind of one of those things. Now, mind you, initially, I was just helping. It wasn't supposed to like me create this, you know, this this promotions empire. I just thought it was something cool to do at the time, not like a career, but just a job. You see what I'm saying? Because um, promotions is definitely like a challenging, challenging career when it comes to that. Not marketing, promotions, completely different. So, um, so he was like, cool. So that worked out. Then when I moved back to the Bay Area, me and him um, decided to work together because he wanted to do a Bay Area tour. He wanted, he's a local independent artist. He goes by the stage name of the homie Nolte and he wanted to do a Bay Area tour. And so I assisted him with that. And, you know, uh, and, and doing all of that assisting with him, one day we went down to the print store to go pick up his flyers. And my partner that I know works at that radio station and does Sideshow Radio, he was walking down the street because he lived in the same neighborhood. So it just so happens on this random day parked in this random spot, my partner that I forgot even lived over there on that side of town just randomly is walking down the street as we're just so happen to go pick up these flyers at this exact same time of the day. And he's like, I've been seeing what you've been doing online and oops, sorry, drop something. He's like, I've been seeing what you've been doing. You've been putting in some work. He said, uh, you know, me and the fellas were wondering if you might be interested in being the female voice for Sideshow Radio. And of course, the business minded person that I am in, in my training, I automatically ask, is this pro bono? And his response was, well, you know, we are a public radio station, so, you know, it, it, it might not be too much of that involved. And I was like, well, I would have did it in any way. I would have done it anyway. I just wanted to know if I was getting paid or not. Because I always wanted to do radio. So I was like, um, okay, yes. And the show was from midnight to two. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to be up anyway. Might as well go do a radio show. That's how I figured it, right? So he tells me what day to go. He tells me, you know, to go down to the next show. Because this was a weekly show, okay? So... He tells me to meet them down there on the next upcoming show and I go down there and it was it was like a perfect fit. It was like playing a Tetris game and you get all the pieces lined up so you can clear a line out or clear a block out. You know what I mean? Like it was just a perfect alignment and it was it was awesome. I enjoyed it. I felt like I got to the point where I always wanted to be and curious and excited as to where it was going to take me if I was really going to keep up with this and how committed I was going to be I was looking forward to the challenge of all of that okay and I'm doing it all for free mind you at the time I was still making money because I was working as a massage therapist okay making good money all right I only work three days a week all right and I'm still paying all my bills and I lived in the bay area okay so I was making decent money so saying all that to say, so I end up, I started doing the show with them and then we decided that we were going to do a website. And when it came to putting the titles on everybody other than co host my good, good friend who was also the engineer and was like a brother to me and rest in peace. And, you know, for uh, Wes, because he is the one that kind of like really guided me on this radio journey like when I first got started like he really had my back him and chill status that chill is the one that approached me you know to you know that even invited me to do all of this I mean to join all of them and you know chill and West, like they really had my back you know and then and then we, I can't forget Dev you know Dev was there Dev had my back Dev was like the 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 hidden eye like he was around but he wasn't around but he always knew what was going on kind of a thing you know what i'm saying and sometimes he pop up on you like that super like that that gm that pop up at your job like you don't know or the regional manager like you don't know when they gonna pop up but they just pop up you feel me so you better make sure you got your a game on and stuff like that so between dev 
and 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 Wes and Chill's dad is like they really helped me. And then you had Dion who was another co host, and then you had Eric B. You know what I mean? And Eric B was like that like that big, like that brother uncle, you know what I'm saying? Like super dope, like hella chill, like all of that. And Dion was like me and him was like the like kinda goofy at times, you know what I'm saying? And Chill was the laid back, quiet one. Wes was the engineer and like, you know, kind of maintained us when we got a little bit out of control. So it was like we were a family. We were a team. You know what I'm saying? And it felt right. It felt so, so right. And to be able to do that and then also have a career in as a massage therapist, it was it was one of the moments in my life where I could definitely say that everything was aligned and t- like life was good. Life was really good, you know? And then we got, um, we got the opportunity to create a whole second show that would come on Sundays. Now the Sunday show was a tough one cause that came on at 1 AM and ended at 5 AM. You know what I mean? And sometimes we would have to do both shows back to back. And then on top of that, I got invited to be um, a television show host. So sometimes I would have a full schedule where I would get off of work on Friday. I would have to go do the radio show at 12 a.m. midnight that Friday meet Saturday, right? Um, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. And then Saturday... Okay, I would have to record the the TV show and sometimes we would do like three episodes and each episode is like 30 minutes. I would have just enough time to go home, change clothes, possibly get some rest because I might have to show face at an event or go uh, 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 scout out for some talent, you know, and everything to, to network or whatever. And then have to go to the radio show. At 1 a.m. in the morning. So sometimes my schedule would be like super, super crazy. You know, when I was got when I got into radio and was a massage therapist. But when I tell y'all that us doing that show and the times that we had and the people we got to interview and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. It was it was an awesome experience. It really was. KPFA was my radio home. Now, when it comes to online radio, the person who introduced me to online radio, which is happened when I was up here, when I was in Seattle, living at the time before I had moved back to California, is a woman by the name of Lady Flavor. All right. She is um, a, a she's the independent artist cheerleader. She knows her in and out when it comes to this independent music business game. And she when if you got good, if you have good quality art or uh, music ability, oh, she will play you. She is not she but she will also give you the raw uncut truth if she doesn't agree with the music or she doesn't like the quality of it. Like she raises the bar on independent artists so they can get the respect that they deserve and that they're looking for in being an independent artist but with a mainstream artist clout, okay? So she raises the bar and she expects nothing less, whether it's performing, whether it's on the on the radio, their songs that they submit, all of that. You know, she has great advice, but saying all that to say, she was doing a radio show and I was listening to her show. And on Blog Talk, you can listen through your phone or you can listen online. And so I was listening to her phone online and her daughter, who is a friend of mine, she had texted me because she was living with her mom at the time and was there while she was doing the radio show. And I was commenting in the um, the community space that they have on Blog Talk Radio where you can communicate with the host, which is Lady Flavor. So I'm communicating with her. And next thing you know, she tells her daughter to text me and tells me to call in. That was my first time on doing online radio as a guest on her show. Mind you, I wasn't in radio yet. I wasn't in the entertainment industry yet. I was just a girl living in Seattle at her cousin house and was showing support by listening to my friend's mom do her radio show. 
because I respected her mom's insight when it comes to business and when it comes to challenging music artists to be better than where they're at and not feel content and comfortable and settle for anything less. So when I tell y'all, let me tell y'all, when I tell y'all, I was really excited in that moment, but nervous at the same time. It was like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Because in my brain, I'm like, it's the internet, like millions and millions of people are listening. Like, mind you, there, it, it, I had never done it like that before. Now, mind you, when I was 18, 19, and I went with them to the radio show, you know, with my friends and stuff, and we were at the radio station with them, we weren't like hosting the show. We were just there hanging out, you know? We weren't promoting nothing. We weren't hosting or anything. We were just there hanging out. This is her actually having a conversation with me on her radio show. Completely different dynamic. Okay? So, she, Lady Flava, she is the one that introduced me to online radio and podcasting and things of that nature. And I was hooked. I was hooked. It got me to start researching, like, how could I do this? Da 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 da, da. You know, I, I started doing that. But then I didn't, like, move forward with it right life happens things happen i didn't move forward but then a several a few years later what ends up happening i actually get my feet wet and the opportunity to do radio in a station get raw training from people who've already been doing it and they're showing me how to be the best host that i can be you know and I appreciated that. And I'm so grateful for the experience. But yes, y'all, that is how I got into radio. That is how I got into radio. I saw an opportunity. I was presented with an opportunity and I took it. I didn't know what the outcome would be. You know, it, it's kind of like that movie. And I think that's what happened, too. There was that movie with Jim Carrey, Yes Man, where he's always like a Debbie Downer and he don't want to try nothing or anything like that. But then he goes to this seminar where the, the guy who's hosting the seminar just wants to teach people that you just need to say yes to life's opportunities because you never know where it's going to lead you to and what's going to happen. And that's part of life's journey and the excitement of life and actual actually living. And so... Probably It was probably after I seen that when I kind of adopted that philosophy to my life, but also making sure that I'm seeing, you know, any red flags before I do that. And so I took the opportunity and I ran with it, you know, and I created an opportunity, too, when I had asked um, the homie Nolte if he would be willing to work with me when I was even in Seattle to the point where we continued our business relationship when I moved back to the Bay Area. Which then led to me running into chill status, which then led me to being at the radio show, which then led me eight years later being here with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at that. Look at that. And the inspiration that I had for doing radio came when I was at a young age, when I was like eight. Eight. And... It's, it's just amazing to me. And I feel like this is what it is. This is what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to do radio. I'm meant to be, to use my voice. I'm meant to do talking and to speak to the masses and share my thoughts and my opinions and my my life story and make it, make it relatable and make it real. This is reality. Like, this is real life. You know what I mean? It's not edited. It's not like I don't do anything to where it. I'm trying to present this image or whatever. So let me chop this up or whatever. Like if I cough, I cough. If I burp, I burp. If I drop something like I did earlier, I drop something. Like I'm not finna. I don't edit. I might edit like pictures, you know, that I'm doing for a promotion, like a collage or something like that. Or if I want to make a, 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 you know, a moving picture. You know, that kind of a thing. But as far as like, if it's me being recorded, no, there's no editing. There's no editing. It is what it is. It is what it is. No, I don't post everything. I don't share everything because what I learned from the producer I worked with when I was recording that TV show, the producer and creator of the show, she told me, that you can't give every you can't give all of yourself to people because then 
they they won't look forward to when you do give them something. And then also to add to that later in life, I learned you can't give your all to everything or to everyone because you have to have you have to save something for yourself. You know, and I will be completely honest with you with things that I am really comfortable with talking about. I'm going to share them with you. I, I, I will. I'm going to do that. And I've already kind of started doing that. And this is an, this is an opportunity right here. I'm telling you all how I got started in radio. So I'm and I hope by the end of me telling you guys these stories or these little anecdotes or whatever, there's a moral to the story that you get out of it. Kind of like Aesop fables, you know, kind of a thing where I hope that you get out of it that opportunities are there and you do have choices. And sometimes what you if you're not doing what you love doing and you're not happy with what you're currently doing, you might need to go back and think about what you used to love doing as a kid and what brought you happiness and then ask yourself also what would you do what what bring what makes you happy and you would look forward to doing every day but you would do it for free once you answer that question find out if how you can make that into a business boom not only are you an entrepreneur but then you get to do what you love every day and then you get paid for it it's it I know it sounds like it's too simple, but sometimes things in life are really just that simple. It really, really is. So with that being said, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you can take this story with you. And I hope you guys will continue to embark on this journey with me as I do this. This is Reality Radio. This is my umbrella. This is my my branding umbrella baby okay and the other shows that are attached to it are my my little babies okay but reality the brand that's 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 it within itself all right this is my two cents presented by reality radio if you're watching and listening to this on uh youtube thank you leave a comment down in the comment section like or dislike let me know you know what are your thoughts what what experiences have you had that similar to the one that I just gave you? You know, do you have full circle stories about where you started and, and, and what seed was planted and then it blossomed on its own and you didn't necessarily plan on it doing that, but it did it on its own and you couldn't be happier. You know, uh, let me know. Did something you plan and it didn't go that way? You know, what happened? How did you deal with the challenges? Talk to me. I talk back. And thank you for joining me. If you're listening to uh, listening to this on any other uh, podcast platform like Spotify or anything like that, Deezer, Stitcher, like all of that, like I appreciate y'all, you know, talk to me. I talk back, you know, share this with somebody that might need to, to get a little bit of reality on what opportunities can do. And sometimes you just got to be open and, you know. Say yes. So in the words of Floetry, say yes. That did not sound right. That was really off key. But I'm not a singer like that no more. And it's cold in here. And I don't have a voice. And I'm really, really thirsty. So don't even like get on me about that. But anyway, I'm about to get up off here. I'm starting to ramble. And I love y'all. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk to you later. Bye.